This office is an old shed where they used to keep all the steam engines. It stood derelict for quite some time and has been refurbished into office accommodation. In the days when it was built in the 1860s, there was no artificial lighting to speak of, so obviously you had these large areas of skylight to allow natural light to come in. So the key thing was to maximise the use of that natural light, uh, and although bring in artificial lighting, obviously to minimise the artificial lighting when we had this wonderful natural resource. The critical thing here was to make sure that whatever control we put in, whatever artificial lighting we put in, the relationship between the natural light and the artificial lighting was working working and worked without a blip, as it were. We used uh, five key suppliers for the project in terms of uh, luminaires. We used Fagerholt, uh, NJO Technology, ACDC, Optelma and Traxon. Underneath the mezzanine we've got these acoustic panels and behind the acoustic panels are colour changing LEDs that wash up onto the ceiling. Mode lighting gave us the lighting control system, however mode are a hardware firm so they supply lighting controls kits which can configure and create scenes but we had to go to a third party uh, a company called Isensia in order to help us develop the software which uh, then allows the user interface. We spent two and a half years trying to develop the user interface in this office so we we started the conversations about that interface a year before we moved in and I would say it's only in the last 14, 16 months that we've actually got a system that we're happy with. With lighting control you either go dictatorship or communism. So you either completely control it yourself and nobody gets a chance, or you go communist as it were and everybody gets it and everybody can use it. And we've gone the socialist communist system here, anybody can access the software and what we hope is that uh, people don't switch on and off each other's lights, that they behave uh, responsibly, but we do believe in allowing anybody who uses our building to be able to download the software. You can either use it from a PC with a very simple interface, or we have a more sophisticated uh, interface for uh, the, mo the mobile devices. We're in uh, one of the meeting rooms, meeting room one, and we have an iPad on the wall. Uh, this um, iPad has uh, the software, which is loaded up through the system to, to uh, run this room. Um, we, uh, as you can see, uh, when the software comes up, we have some pictures, and the pictures obviously represent the various scenes in this room. At the moment, the, the iPad is connected to the wall. It's actually uh, on a, an induction loop, magnetic induction loop, so I can take it off. Um, this induction loop charges the, um, the, the, the iPad as well, and um, as I say, it can therefore be static on the wall, or we can take it into the room and use it. On the software you can see here, which we've designed, you can see pictures, and this is basically telling an end user how do you want the split scene to look? So for example, we go into presentation mode, we push the button and the room goes to presentation mode. Uh, push this one, which is at 80%, it goes to that. Push this one, which is full output, you can see and feel that the lighting is changing. If we go into the advanced button, we can see that there's a range of buttons which allow us to pick particular colours uh, within the space. Now the point about uh, colour is that white light ca cages colour. So if I dim down the white light in this space, and I've just set this room to purple, you can see the wall uh, which this uh, iPad is mounted on. You can see that it's, it's purple. Or, uh, pushing a button, it's red. Pushing another button, it's blue. And from this situation, as I say, the, the white light has gone way down and the coloured light is, is dominating. But if I take uh, the white light back up again in the space, white light cages colour. We've got a couple of automated controls here. Uh, the first is the, uh, is the daylight linking. So on the tracks on the ground floor and on the first floor, we have four luminance sensors. So what they're doing is they're looking down at the desk and they're measuring the luminance on the desk rather than the illuminance. When we have lots of natural light that like we've got at the moment, fundamentally that picks it up. 
and sends a signal to the mode and the mode dims down everything that is connected to that luminance sensor. We've got four sensors and four zones, uh, two on the ground floor and two on the mezzanine. All these light fittings have gone down apart from the last two. So those last two that you can see there are in a bay on their own and that's because there's no uh, skylight in that bay. So obviously for those people we've got to keep our artificial lighting at full output. We have got a 65 meter uh, direct indirect fitting that goes all along the bulkhead. That also is linked. Uh, these pendants, um, breakout pendants, uh, there is a low glow to them as well. So everything fundamentally that's being washed with daylight dims down. We have a policy of 630, everything switches down to 25% uh, on the assumption that people are starting to leave the office. There is, however, a PC override on that. So everything goes automatically to 25% at 6.30. Uh, however, if you're still working and you're going to be working for longer than that, you can go onto a website. It brings up a plan of the office. Uh, when you look at that plan, every area is split it up into a zones, which is what you can do with Dali's uh, quite easily. And fundamentally, you can identify your zone, click on the button. And if you click on that button, your zone will go up to full output. I think that this is a nice office to work in. I think we've had lots of positive feedback. I love it.